Alrighty folks, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. Hey, I appreciate y'all taking time out of your day to watch the videos. I know it's, uh, some of them are a little iffy, but hey, I'm doing what I can to get the best content out there for y'all that I can. But what I wanted to do is twofold in this video is do a wrap up of Rocky Mountain Race Week and then a quick discussion on the current state of Shake and Bake and where we're at on doing some of our updates. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flash a few pictures up from Rocky Mountain Race Week as I'm talking about Rocky Mountain Race Week. And when I run out of pictures, you'll see my my uh, ugly mug <laughs> for a few minutes. And then, like I said, we'll do a quick update on where Shake and Bake is and where we're headed, uh, which plans really haven't changed that much. So let's talk about Rocky Mountain Race Week. Um, overall, had a blast uh jay and i just had so much fun uh don't get me wrong we had we had a few moments here and there nothing big nothing we didn't you know get through work through um you know once once you're uh you know you get to that point where you're kind of overworked a little bit and you're tired uh you tend to get a little irritable and you know we just hey set our piece go to sleep wake up the next morning and off we went but overall an awesome awesome week so if you haven't looked at either the facebook page the instagram page i think they have a youtube channel as well rocky mountain race week uh, it is a phenomenal time as you see we had a blast uh, we met cody and tj from alabama hung with them Pretty much all week but I also did again uh, meet a bunch of other people that were were really really awesome and you can go to Jay's video and see all of the people that he met all the people that he talked to how helpful open and just friendly uh, everybody was it was uh, really a phenomenal week and really unlike any race event that I've ever been to you know you go to a test and tune or you go to a race or uh, you know some of race event and you know people sometimes are standoffish don't want to talk about their cars don't want to talk about their setups and there was none of that Jay was talking about everybody set <laughs> everybody's setup uh, during Rocky Mountain Race Week and you know they were open to t open to discussion open to talk about it and you know we talked about hey this is what I'm doing with my car what do you think you know what's your thoughts and you know I got a few different thoughts from different people uh, on you know the route we're going with with shake and bake and you know some most of the people agreed hey that's you know you're going down the right path you know some are like well maybe you should have went this way or whatever what have you but it was it was great conversation uh, it wasn't that oh this is this is what I would have done and you should be doing it this way it's like Hey, you know, I would have maybe done this or I maybe would have done that, but um, super great people. Um, the race tracks were phenomenal. They were all spot on. Um, they were pushing people through. Now, not, I want to say pushing people through because that makes it sound bad, but uh, everything went extremely smooth. Every race track was extremely smooth. And that's a shout out to the Rocky Mountain Race week, week people that set it up, uh, took the time to be at each and one of the tracks to help them, you know, get through things. Because uh, they've been doing this for years, so they've got plenty of experience uh, on, you know, how things should go and stuff like that. And some of these tracks were new for them, so uh, shout out to to both the track uh, track personnel and Rocky Mountain Race Week personnel for putting on a phenomenal, phenomenal event. Uh, and just uh, the the planning coordination that had to go in to, to having the entire week go, from my perspective, right, as a racer, 
uh, super smooth. I know you probably had a bunch of things in the background going on to make things happen. But from a, from a racer's point of view, that was one of the smoothest, if not the smoothest race event across five tracks. Well, four tracks, Tulsa twice, um, that I've ever been to. And the, you know, the order pretty much stayed the same. There wasn't much change in the order. There wasn't much change in which lanes you were lining up on. So when you went to, you know, from Tulsa to Texas, hey, the 10 class, you're going to be after the 9 class, and you're going to be in lanes three and four at pretty much every track. I think Mo Can things changed. The, the order didn't change, but the lanes changed because they didn't have as many lanes. But guys, phenomenal, phenomenal event. Um, definitely going back next year, 100%, without, without even thinking. Unless something happens between now and then, um, definitely going back next year. Now, going through it day, day in, day out, it was, it was tough. It was taxing. Uh, it was mentally and physically taxing uh, to, to do it, to make it happen. Jay put in a lot of work. Again, if it was not for Jay, I don't think I would have made it through Rocky Mountain Race Week. If I would have went up there by myself, no way could I have done that by myself. So uh, my highly, su highly post suggestion is you definitely take a crew member with you. Uh, e even if you're 100% healthy. Me, I'm not 100% healthy. My knees are bad, my back is bad, my ankles are bad. And, and that's just years and years of military, uh, you know, beating on me. But that's another story. But I would definitely take some with you because it, it is a lot of work between setting up the tents, the chairs, the, uh, the trailer, swapping tires out. All, all of that takes takes its its tool and Jay I know I told you a thousand times I'm gonna tell you again dude I appreciate everything you did for me and the car during Rocky Mountain Race Week and I, I told you this a thousand times too it wasn't just Don and Shake and Bake it was Don Jay and Shake and Bake it was our week not just my week or, or Shake and Bake's week it was our week and I think we did a pretty good job of making it our week and not just a singular entity because uh, I think we worked well together uh, again as we got tired and got irritable <laughs> you know got a little itchy here and there um, but we worked through it you know we did our thing and and you know we're still great friends I think we're better friends now than what we were uh, before Rocky Mountain Race Week so there's another good thing out of Race Week if you take someone with you uh, you're spending all of that time in a car with with a with a person uh you know you really get to know each other a lot better uh, and we had a lot of a lot of great conversations um but yeah I, I have nothing but good things to say about rocky mountain race week so if you have the chance definitely try and do it uh i i, I highly recommend trying to do it now Shake and Bake, where we're at, and what the future looks like. So the future still looks the same for Shake and Bake. The setup is still the same currently right now. We are on the stock PCM, uh, which is limiting us significantly. Um, we could have worked out around that, but we spent more time trying to get the Holly in than we did trying to work around the stock PCM. And we just ran out of time. So that's why we went with the stock PCM. We just basically ran out of time. The torque converter. We're still going to figure out what is wrong with that torque converter. If it's stock torque converter or what, we're gonna get it cut open, we're gonna get it looked at, we're gonna get checked out. And then I'll have a conversation with, uh, with, with that company and see if they're gonna do anything for me. Either they will or they won't, and we'll move on. But we do have uh, another torque converter, a 4,000 stall torque converter built specifically for my setup. Uh, and 
the plan is still to get the holly in. So while I was gone at Rocky Mountain Race Week, uh, Mac and Dave sent the holly and the, the gateway back to Big Three Racing, gave them my VIN number and the whole nine yards to hopefully clear up any more issues that we, we may come across. So the issue before I left was uh, the alternator was, wasn't putting out enough uh, power to recharge the battery. So it was dipping into the 11s, down into the 10s, depending how much stuff was on. You know, whether you're running the air conditioner, the radio, and the fans, and all that. Um, it was dropping low 11s, high 10s uh, with the Holly. So that's why we couldn't go with the Holly, and we went with the stock PCM. So hopefully over the week, they kind of got that figured out. Uh, they uh, sent it back as of yesterday, sent it back to Mac and Dave. And now I am at the point where I have to wait until Mac and Dave have an opening for me to squeeze into, uh, to, to one, put in the holly, put in the torque converter, and then not only put in that stuff, but then get it on the dyno uh, and tune it for... Uh, tune in the holly so that's where we are uh, we're in a waiting game and I could not have done it without three specific companies that's Orisman CDJR Abui who got me the, sh the long block the 6.4 long block MMX Modern Muscle Extreme who not only overnighted uh, the pistons and rods but they overnighted in a separate package, the coated bearings that, that I, uh, I had ordered. They were on back order when I ordered them. So I asked them, hey, can you just ship the rods and pistons and rings so we can get that piece started and then we'll worry about, worry about the bearings you know, when that time comes. Well, literally it was a day, the day after the rods and stuff showed up. I think it was the day after the bearings showed up so shout out to MMX uh, and the last people not the last but probably the first and foremost should have been EFI specialties uh, and Mac definitely could not have done Rocky Mountain Race Week without those two um, I can't express my thanks enough uh, I know a lot of you that have cars with Mac and Dave uh, were upset and arguably so you should be upset because if it were me in your position I probably would have been upset too but this was yeah, uh, uh, not only a big thing for me but a big thing for the shop to get out there to Rocky Mountain Race Week get out there get their name out there though there weren't very many Hemis out there but uh, it was about getting their name out there and the companies that helped uh, with Shake and Bake uh, getting her out there. And uh, Mac and Dave both know I personally put in thousands of dollars for Rocky Mountain Race. That, I, at this point, it's over probably 10, 11 grand or so between everything we did and the Holly and the Gateway and the... Um, harness the engine getting the engine done swapping them out all of that uh, uh you know i'm probably in 10 15 grand or so uh, to get all of that done and yes i am paying both dave and mac for their time and for everything they did uh that they, they are getting paid in full for all of that so lots of stuff going on that's the latest update with Shake and Bake. You got my final video on Rocky Mountain Race Week. The possibility I may go to the track this weekend, depending on what the weather looks like. Uh, if it's still in the 90s and 130, 140 grains uh, of water in the air, I'm probably not going to go. All right, the camera is getting overheated. It already shut off on me once. So that is going to do it for this one, folks. Till next time, adios.